So, we're going to make the buttons actually work. So what I'm going to do, this is me being lazy. I'm going to design view. And I am double clicking on the web development button just so that I get into that button web click event easily. What do I want to do when button web is clicked? I want to hide the other ones and then show the button uh, or show the panel for uh, web. So I could go like this. I could say I could say panel web visible true. Panel mobile. Panel software. Panel network equals false. Now what do I do? I repeat this for the other three buttons. And I show and hide the appropriate things there. So when the mobile button is clicked, I make this panel not visible, this one visible. Let's go and run this. Change the button name. Change the button name. Thank you. I did it. Okay, I did for all but that one. All right, let's go and run this. Okay. And it's not working. That's the button click event. So let's go in. And let's see if we can get this to work. was is me copying the code it, it did not whatever I did the steps I did it wasn't I made some mistake I, you know we can do like in the NFL and review the tape if you want but somehow that code wasn't associated with the button clip event a uh, button click event so I'm going to go in and do this to make sure that the code does get associated with the button click event and then we should be in business. Is that because you copied it? Yeah, because I copied it instead of going in and, and it seems odd. There's probably something that I missed that I could have done to do that, but no, I'll live and learn. All right, so now everything should work.
you remember before, all right, if you remember before, the four panels were stacked on top of each other. In other words, software development was down a little bit. Uh, mobile development was down a little bit. Networking was all at the bottom. When I do this now, it doesn't do that. In other words, as soon as I click on one, it moves to the top. You understand what I mean? In other words, networking isn't like way at the bottom, and I have to scroll down to get to it. How did I achieve that magic? It's like that, but it's even simpler than that. Okay? It's, it's simpler than that. I didn't do anything to achieve this magic. All right? Why not? Well, remember the HTML. That's why I was so interested in looking at to see if that HTML got generated or not. All right? That HTML just isn't there. I didn't do anything special to style it. Therefore, the browser goes in its normal flow. And... The, the div simply pops down, down below the navigation buttons. All right? I guess my point is, is that one issue that sometimes beginning web developers do uh, or have is that they try to micromanage the CSS. They try to very tightly control every aspect of it. If instead you just let the browser work its magic, that'll work for you a lot of times. You know, position the main things on your page, but within sections of the page, you might not have to do anything in particular. And it might, if, it, if you just follow the flow, it'll flow in the way that you want it to. All right. Questions about this? Now. What separates a program that works versus a program that is good. In other words, we achieved what we wanted to achieve. Is our code as good as it could be? And let's forget about the appearance now. I'm just talking about the code. Is our code as good as it could be? Well, you can probably tell by the fact that I'm asking that question that my answer is no. It's not as good as it could be. Well, why not? It, it's, it works pretty well. I mean, it shows and all that. Yes. Well, you have, you repeated um, yeah. the, button, or the, the panel each time in each of those functions. Yeah, I essentially have, not really, but sort of duplicate code in four places. Okay? Sort of duplicate code in four places. All right? So... Alright? 
the other thing that we'd have to do is that we would have to go in and add a new function to the show hide for end or to the to the button uh, forensics to show it when it's clicked and to hide the other four. So that's five functions that would have to touch. All right, and if we didn't do that right, would have a bug, would have a mistake. All right. So can we do better than that? Yes, we can do better than that. So the question of how, or rather what the difference is between OK programming and programming that's good, one of the first components with that is maintainability. All right. How easy is it to make changes? Generally speaking, if it's easy to make changes, it's probably good. If there's two pieces of code and one of them is a nightmare to change and one of them is simple to change, the simple one to change is more than likely the better code. All right? Very few exceptions to that rule. All right? You could probably you could probably think of one or you could probably concoct some, but nah. So your program working is just sort of like the baseline. You know, that's a C. <laughs> you know, yeah, you did the job. You did okay. You know, but you're not like doing it well necessarily. So what we want to do in this class is always look for ways of doing it a little better. So in a nutshell, this is what we have. And I'll abbreviate a little bit. We have but one code that is panel one visible true, panels two, three, four, visible equals false. Then we have for button two, we have one visible false, and then two visible equals true, three visible equals false, and so on down the line. What can we do to make this easier to change? And again, what should your criteria be if I was going to add another button, or a button and, and, and panel here, what would be easier to change? How could I make this code easier to change? difference between each of these functions? Turning one panel on and the other's off. Right. If I could summarize these functions, I'm turning most every panel off, right? Turning, turning all but one panel off, all right? And then I'm showing one, all right? And I have the code to turn most every panel off in all four places. So what could I do instead? Yes? Like, I don't know the exact code, but you can say, like, if, I don't know, that onclick code that you had in the, the spx.cs file, if, if the click for that, like, button, then true or something. Okay. Does anyone have any, any other thoughts on that? Or Good thought. Then said, then said visible or true. Yeah. Good thought. What about this? What are we turning off on every button? On every button, we're turning off nearly every um, panel. And then we're showing one. Why not turn every panel off? All right? Because the difference is, is in one case, it turns, all of them are turning three of the four panels off. Right? The difference is, is the one that is turning on. So that's what I need to code somehow. Right? That's what I need to code. I need to code the one that is turning something on. The one that's turning everything off, I might be able to write some code that's reusable. Now let's think about this. In terms of processing speed or efficiency, all right, um, is there a substantial difference between 
turning something off and then turning it back on immediately? Nope. There'll be no difference to the user, right? Because this is all happening on the server. In terms of processing speed, that extra instruction is round off error. Right? It doesn't add any, uh, it doesn't add any uh, additional processing time, virtually any additional processing time. So if I simplify things and I turn everything off and then turn the one on that I want to, all right, this function becomes simplified because what I'll do is I'll write the code and I'll do it in terms of a function, turn everything off, Then, I'll turn on the one that I want to. And what's in turn everything on, off? Turn everything off sets everything visible to false. Will be a function that sets everything So, I'll go 
in here and I'm going to copy a function that says protected void hide everything. There's no arguments to this. And what it's going to do is it's going to turn everything off. All right. I then I'm going to go in and I'm going to call that and then I'm going to make the one thing that needs to be visible visible. case-sensitive. Right? There's no such thing as a lowercase v isable property. There is an uppercase v isable property. So you have to put it, that in that way. All right. 
Now, the question about refactoring, you know, where do you stop? Could I make this even better? Well, I don't know. I, I can think of one little improvement that I might make to it. One small uh, improvement that I might make to it. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But that's a hard question to answer, you know. That is where, um, you know, your own ability and um, the time constraints of the project come in, right? You know, you, you know, it's an art to know to balance, you know, your desire for making it as good as it can be with the practicalities of it being due at a certain time and so on. And I'm not just talking about like for a class, but in, in a real life situation where you have deadlines and all that. So it's an art to sort of balance those two forces. You know, you as a developer, you know, want the code to be as great as it's going to be. And refactoring is going to ultimately save the organization money, right? Because it's easier to maintain, it's going to be quicker to maintain. That's a hard sell for someone if they can't see tangible benefits. In other words, when you compared the code that I had a minute ago, or a few minutes ago, with the code I have now, from the perspective of viewing the web page, almost you know, nothing changed. You can't tell that I refactored. You'll tell that you refactored when you go back in and change it. That's hard to convince a manager that that was really an improvement. Because they don't see any improvement on the screen. And they don't understand the, the, the process of coding and maintaining code to, 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 to do that, you know. The best you can do is try to convince them that, try to get some time for that. But, again, there, there are, there, there's always going to be a point where the practicalities of the situation trumps your theoretical, uh, I can make it better. Now, the next enhancement that I'm going to make to this probably makes it better. But that's not really why I'm doing it. I'm doing it to, to illustrate a, a little bit of a point about programming. Yes, go ahead. Um, the term refactoring, could you also use that to go back and make improvements like in efficiency or memory usage? Or yeah, any, any kind of improvement to the code is refactoring. Yep. For ones like this, the, the memory usage, the efficiency, the processing is, is a, a much lower concern than the maintainability of this. But depending on the specific process, you know, if, if you're working on something, you know, in an engineering application that's running a machine or something, whereas the speed at which it processes is critical to it, then yeah, then, then, then maybe your goals will be a little bit different. All right? Now, you'll notice sort of uh, a key idea of refactoring is to take some code that's repeated and push it off into its own function. All right? Pretty much the philosophy. We noticed that pretty much we were doing the same thing every time we clicked a button, so we took that section and we put it in its own function. All right? Now, what we could do is we could tweak this function a little bit because now we have code that's kind of the same in both cases. All right. The only difference is, is which particular thing we're hiding. Oh, I'm sorry, that we're showing. All right. So when you have a case of you have a function that you want to do, the function we want to do is make this visible. The only difference between this is which specific panel we want to make visible. All right? One way to do that is to create a function that accepts an argument. All right? Create a function that accepts an argument. So I could change this function a little bit to say hide everything show selected 